Hey, Tom, how you doing? Hey, good morning. How are you guys doing? Hey, Tom, good to see you. Ben hey. and Alyssa, is this the door you wrote me about? This is the door. Oh, it's a beauty. Yeah, we think it's original to the house, built in 1918. Yeah, it could be original to the house. It looks like the finish is burnt right off of it. <laughs> yeah, it definitely needs a lot of love, and, you know, we love this door, and we want to restore it back to its original beauty. You want to restore it. You don't want a new door. Mm-mm. All right, well, it's a lot of work to restore a door. I mean, this molding detail right here, as beautiful as it is, you can buy something similar to this off the shelf. We could take it off and just replace it. I mean, we really love this door. We'd like to keep, you know, everything as is, but, uh, you know, clean it up, make it look brand new, I guess. Yeah, it's a beauty. It's got a nice dental detail down here with a cornice molding and then a slope right here to make up this little pediment. That's a nice little detail. And down here, you can see the veneer on this panel is all lifted and cracked. That have to be fixed. And over here, you can see that somebody patched a hole <laughs> for a deadbolt <laughs> and put a new one in, but they didn't line it up right. So a lot of work. But yeah, if you're up for it, I'm up for it. We're ready to go. All right, well, let's get it off the hinges and we can get started. Right. Okay, sounds good. Let me help you out. All right. <laughs> all right, let's set it down right here. Okay, so now I guess the first thing we want to do is try to get some of this molding off, this off, get the glass out, and then we can go after the hardware. I'll try this little bar, we'll try a bunch of different things, whatever works. So that edge of this molding underneath here has a little notch taken out of it so it can sit on the face of the door. So what we need to do is get under there just a little bit Nice and easy, stretch it out. <laughs> yeah, see, now you, you can get under there. Just, All right. Yep. All right. Let me reposition down here. I just don't want to get under that glass either, so. Come on. There it is. There we go, nice and easy. Yeah. Slow and steady, right? That's right. There we go. Wow. Look at that. Nice, so see, there's the little rabbited edge that I was talking about right there. So this part right here sits right on the face of the door and it wraps around, making that joint more weather tight. All right, let's work our way around. That's a good sound, right? Yeah. I'm just gonna watch that joint. So now the next thing we're going to try to do is cut this silicone away from the glass. Nice. I'm not a big fan with using silicone to set this window in because the silicone is fantastic for the glass that's non-porous. But when you're dealing with a porous material like the wood, that silicone, when it breaks its connection, will leak. And with silicone and wood, if you try to recock that joint, it won't seal to itself. So that means you've got to remove all of the old caulking before you can recock it. I would recommend an acrylic or a polyurethane base caulking or even a butyl caulking in a case like this. Mm -hmm. Coming up. Let's see if I can pull it out. Oh, there we go. Look at that. That's it. Nice. Nice. All right, I think we've got all the silicone removed. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to pull the nails out of that molding. We want to pull them from behind, not from the face, because if I tap them down, we could chip the wood and ruin it. So what you want to do is you want to grab the nail, tight to the wood, and then roll it down gently. Just work your way right down the nail. Nice, you nailed it. 
<laughs> All right, now we're set up to strip off the old residue of the finish on these moldings. We can't really sand it because you don't want to lose that detail. Right. Well, now this is a water-based stripper. You want to lay it on kind of thick. Okay. All right, while you guys are doing this, I'm going to start working on some repairs for the door. Okay. Sounds good. Great. All right. All right, so now the manufacturer says we have to wrap it in plastic so that nothing evaporates off of it. Leave it in there for about half an hour, 45 minutes. All right, so I've cut off this veneer that was cracked and lifted, and we'll put some filler in there because we're gonna veneer right over this whole panel. All right, so let's see how it looks. I just put it in a bucket of water, scrubbed it in the water, and boy, that's cleaning up nicely. Look at that. Yeah. Looks beautiful. Yeah, so different. We've patched up everything, and uh, the door is all sanded and ready for the new veneer. Why do we need to add a veneer on here? Well, because the veneer that's on the door now is pretty beat up. Yeah. You get beat up by the sun. We had to fill the holes and voids and stuff like that. And you'd worry about the glue separating from the backside of the veneer. Okay. Now, have you ever seen a veneer in a roll like this before? <laughs> I have not. Well, veneers are pretty common on cabinet doors, floors, and doors just like this. It allows them to have, like this case, is a piece of mahogany, as opposed to this piece of mahogany being two inches thick, it's a sixteenth of an inch thick. And so we're gonna cut this veneer in strips so we can do our styles and our rails. It's good to have a nice, sharp knife when you're doing this. Now that piece that we're gonna cut off is about a half an inch wider than we need because we'll trim it later. All right, now we wanna glue this down onto one of the rails. And you notice that I cut it a little bit longer because I wanted to overhang that joint slightly. So I want a little bit down here a little bit down there, and the width is gonna be good. We're gonna keep this edge even with the inside of the panel. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna peel some of this back to expose the glue, but I don't wanna take it all off. I just wanna peel it up a little bit like that, fold it down. Okay, so now we're gonna line it up again. Don't push it down onto the glue until I say, good, I'm, I'm overhanging my joint and you are overhanging yours. Keep it flush right there, yep. All right, how's it look, all right? Looks good. So now man. we just push this down like that. So now we know that it's straight. It's gonna line up because it's not gonna move. Now I'm gonna pick up. I'm gonna pull out the paper off the back to expose the adhesive. And slowly push it right down. Go back a little more. Good. Now we're going to roll it, and I want to start in the middle and work my way out. That way, if there's any bubbles under the veneer, we'll work them right out. Sounds good. And now we'll repeat this process for the rest of the veneer. Peel it off and slide it down. Now we'll go ahead and cut the excess with a knife. So now what we're gonna do is we've got a new lock set 
for the front door, so that means we have to bore some new holes to match up with the new lock set. All right, we're ready to install a sanding sealer, and that will help with the adhesion of the finish. I want to put a bead of glazing around the opening so we can set the glass in it. Set it in there nice and gently. And you're going to drop yours down as far as you can before you let it go. That nice fit. I know a lot of work went into the detail on this trim, but I'll tell you what, it looks great. Doesn't it look good? Look at that. I mean, it's a fantastic door. It's like a brand new door, right? Absolutely. It looks beautiful. We'll get them into the opening, and then we're going to nail them on. All right, good. Now let's see if it still fits. It still fits. It still fits, and it looks good. Looks All right. Great. We've got our primer coat on. Now we're ready for one of our final finish coats. Okay. We're gonna roll on our first coat of urethane. This is a semi-gloss. So we hung it in the opening so we can do both sides of the door at the same time, but also later on this evening, you'll be able to close the door. You wanna have a door overnight, right? I like that. All right, so I'm gonna put the hardware on. This is the hardware that you picked. It's really nice. Oh, I love the look of it. So I'm gonna get this installed. All right, guys, what do you think? The door is done and hung, and look at the uh, hardware. Pretty oh, nice. Looks great. All right, so I have some homework for you. What I want you to do is wait for the door to really dry. It's dry to the touch right now, but I want it to dry for about 24 hours. Sand it light with, with some 220 paper, wipe it off with a damp rag, make sure there's no moisture on the door, and give it another coat, and do that two times. You can do that. All right, well, I'm gonna leave it to you. Perfect, right. thanks a lot. Thanks Thank again. you so Looks much, great. Tom. My pleasure, glad I could help. <laughs> Tommy, that is just awesome. I love that transformation, it's yeah. so cool. I love taking an old door like that and giving it new life. So when it comes to old doors, when people hear a door that's 100 years old or so, I think they're probably thinking it's a solid piece of wood. Mm -hmm. And it might be surprising to find out that it's not always that way. Right, and some doors could be. But most of the time when you say a solid wood door, people don't realize that the core of the door could be something like this top right here. It could be individual pieces of wood that are glued together. Right. But the benefit to those individual pieces for the core of the door actually gives the door more stability than one solid piece. Right, we, we actually think that maybe the rail is one piece, that the style is one piece, but that's not necessarily as stable as this. This is more stable, which is why they build it, and then they cover it with the they veneer. They cover it with the species that you want, and that gives you the beautiful door that's stable. So one question, I know that we always test before we sand when we've got paint that we know is old. If you've got sort of a varnish or a poly or something, do we test as well? Absolutely. For, for lead? You know, the old varnishes definitely could have lead in them. So we did test for it. Uh, and the good thing is, is it didn't have lead. But right. the other good thing is the sun had just burnt all of the, most of the finish off. Gotcha. So we had to fight to get, get down to the surface because it was just gummy. Well, it was a good fight with a great outcome. Very nice job, thank you. Thanks for watching. This Old House has got a video for just about every home improvement project, so be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button. Make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.